Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as uh, Kara said, I'm Tom Lawton. I'm wearing many hats these days, but today it's for the Waterways Trust, uh, Scotland Waterways Trust. I'd be very much involved with Canal College. Um, and uh, this is enrolling volunteers. I'd like you to quickly read this. Canal College is a training and employment initiative for 16 to 25 year olds. Um, and we give them support, guidance, and most importantly, they have a bit of fun. Uh, we have several mentors and trainers. Uh, they get life skills, but most of all, we get them involved in the very fact with youngsters nowadays is getting them out of bed in the morning. And this has been working now for about three years, so it goes quite well. And we'll be involved with uh, Natural Heritage, Archaeology Scotland, in various stakes. And I'm just going to cover, cover uh, only two of them. This was Canal College, which started up three years ago, and we'd have groups of up to about 18, 22 students. And, oh, this is, this is Tommy's Angels. These are two of our uh, coordinators, volunteer coordinators and a mentor, um, and they look after the whole thing, set everything all up. Three very, very clever ladies. And one of the things you have to do is, these people have never met each other before. You've about 20, well, an Edinburgh group and a Falker group meeting here for the first time, about 30 of them, never met each other before. So we sling in a couple of little games, etc., get them to know each other, break the ice, and it's surprising how well it works. This particular one is, sorry, am I on your road there? This particular one is, uh, with newspaper, building the tallest tower that you can. Silly little thing, but it's good fun and it gets them to know each other. And one of the big projects we set off was, in 1933, the locks from the Union Canal down to the Fort and Clyde were closed, filled in, and then over all these years, and you see some of the size of these trees there, we set off to go and look for them. Uh, and you can just see a bit of wall there, but when we got there, you couldn't see that. And with the help of uh, Archaeology Scotland, we started doing the dig, find out where they actually started, which route they took, etc. So here we are at what some people say was lot 11, some people <laughs> say it was lot 1, depends whether you're looking that way or that way. Uh, but here we are starting to, dig, to try and find one of the walls at the start. Uh, and then we can measure and decide whether from that wall is it to our left or to our right. And uh, after a few days digging and a lot of uh, hard grafting, uh, we have actually found the wall. And we then decided that 19 and a half feet going the other way would be the other wall. But uh, we weren't allowed to do that for, for reasons. But it's amazing what we found here uh, is a stump of a tree and lots of little finds. And one slide, Cara hadn't put in, we found a gun. And we reckon it was a, a, a First World War officer's gun. The police were going to destroy it, but we managed to persuade them not to because it was, it was no fit stay. I think they wanted to see them, not to see them, take something else off their records. Um, however, I've lost the slide for that, so I might have to sp speak to Cara to get one for it. But lots of little artifacts. Um, some beer bottles that are nearly 100 years old, all this sort of thing. And then we moved up to find the other log. This was the one that I showed you at the beginning with lots and lots of trees in it, all cleared away. The kids are doing, uh, cleaning up the walls, etc. We're looking for masons marks and all this sort of thing. And we've even found walls where there's been repairs. Now nearby there was a, a brick factory that made tiled bricks for kilns. And it looks as though that's where they got these to do repairs. This is all, we're only down three feet. It's actually about 16 feet deep, but we can't go down any further. And various other little bits, like there's little pinholes in the, boat, the, the, the blocks, and this is where they use cranes and hoops. Because this was all built manually many, many years ago, 1690. And uh, now Archaeology Scotland want it all measured recorded, and this is what they're doing here. More measurements going on, and I think that's Louise there, uh, Gemma, she's probably saying, are you sure that's right? <laughs> <coughs> well, the important thing about it is we've found two and a half locks in the basin in between, 
uh, which had been covered for all, since all these years. As you see, some of the size of the trees there have been a long, long time. Then it was decided we'd link the locks up because on the right-hand side of here, just about 20 feet high, is the canal. So we've now got, we're designing a walkway that will go all the way around. So some membrane was put down, lots of old bits of trees lying about to edge it, and tons and tons of bark. And you just see one of the locks behind him there. Is that Alan? Yes, it is. And this would come up to the other lock. And then lovely, it's well used actually, in fact, a lot of cyclists are using it now, and people walking their dogs, etc. And another project at the Craig Myler Stables, um, we were doing lime watering. Now, a lot of the repairs done over the years have been done with cement, which all cracks up and breaks and swells. So, unfortunately, we can only go up to where we can reach. But a jolly good job they've done of it. Uh, we were hoping next year that we might be able to get scaffolding in and do a lot more of it. And of course, just to finish up with um, Historic Scotland in Stirling, where they have their workshops, we have two, uh, in fact, it might be three young lads who were with us on this college are now apprentices there, and I assume they're still there. Uh, I do try to pop in from time to time when I'm in Stirling. It's, it's right near a new place I go to. Um, and then they learn a bit of brickwork as well. This is then built an arch. And the lecturer there uh, proving the point. We had uh, four teams there, so four arches. And they just keep putting on weights and weights and weights. And uh, whose arch lasts the longest wins a prize. <laughs> I've never seen what the prize is when I come to it. <coughs> and to adopt part of the canal, there's various areas along, because the canal itself is an ancient monument. This is one at Mary Hill, um, where we have been volunteered lock keepers at weekends, taking the boats up and down. Myself and others have been training them. And uh, the whole area is kept very clean, very tidy. And there's little batches like that along. We need to get more people involved, but it's quite difficult sometimes. And that's it, folks. Thanks very much indeed. Woo!